Well, you know me, uh, Brian Kutu over at Ocean Solutions Engineer. Um, so I wanted to introduce Securely. Securely is a new offering um, that uh, we've partnered with um, over at Ocean. And we are very excited to have them in our, um, our list of, of um, you know, uh, services that we're allowed to provide our members. Um, they, they, they've been awesome all the way through. Um, we've talked to them multiple times and um, we, we like to believe that, you know, they're, they're more than a vendor to us. They're, they're, they're a partner to us. Um, you know, they're, they're, now, they're now part of the Ocean family. Um, this uh, product, uh, we feel, is a great um, way to enhance uh, student data privacy security. Um, I, I want to, not data privacy, but data security on the internet when students are using their devices um, on-prem, off-prem, all of that. Um, we believe that um, this really adds to all of the things that we're already um, providing to our membership. There are two members uh, from Securely on the phone with us now. Um, we have Marissa and Craig. Um, both of them are rep reps for, the, for our region. Um, Marissa handles pretty much districts that have over 2,000 students, and Craig is gonna handle um, districts that have less than 2,000 students. Um, but in either situation, uh, you can contact myself or anyone at really at Ocean um, if you contact somebody at Securely, we'll all be in contact at this, you know, if you want to learn more about it after this, um, definitely feel free to reach out to myself um, and we can point you in the right direction if, if need be. But uh, not to go on too much because we want to be respectful of everybody's time. I'm going to let uh, Marissa have the floor. Thanks. I appreciate that. Can everybody hear me okay? I see him. Yep. Shaking heads. Right on. Right on. Very cool. Um, guys, I want to just hit on one thing before we get into it. Brian, you have talked many times uh, about this notion of family. Um, and I think there's, there's something to be said for that because it's one thing to talk the talk and it's another to walk the walk, right? Uh, that notion of camaraderie, that togetherness, that's something that we've largely uh, at Securely internally, but especially given the nature of what we do, uh, being in the K-12 space and, and in the business of saving lives, I think that's an even more important thing, icing on the cake as well, um, a, a critical component. So even as you guys join the Moda, as you, as you say hello, you call people out by their first name. You, you, you know people. You've got these relationships with people. That's something I've seen with Brian uh, as well and, and, and your colleagues and everybody that we've spoken with over there. So I just think it's an incredible thing uh, to be partnered with you guys. I think that uh, it's, it's just a phenomenal organization. I think you bring a lot to member districts. And to be a part of that family and to feel that sense of camaraderie and togetherness too, uh, I just I think it speaks volumes. I think it goes a long way. So I want to thank you guys, uh, the, the folks over at Ocean. It's been an incredible experience and incredible partnership so far. Um, and member districts as well. Thank you for joining. Thank you for talking. Thank you for your curiosity. Um, we're just really excited to be a part of this together. Um, and I, I think that's the thing to say that right out the gate, that, uh, that togetherness, I think it goes a long way, especially in such a weird world that we're in right now. So thank you guys. Um, as Brian mentioned, we are Securely. I am Marissa. My colleague is here with me. We'll, we'll talk about ourselves here just in, uh, in another moment so you guys have a better understanding of that from how we're organized. Uh, but long story short, we forged this Securely Ocean Partnership uh, in 2020. Uh, it was a very seamless thing to do together. It made a lot of sense. And really, um, as a result of that partnership, you guys as member districts have access to, I may be biased, uh, but some of the most unrivaled solutions on the market. And the cool thing is you have access to those solutions at a really discounted members only rate. So just good stuff all around. Uh, and we're really excited to be talking to you about what those tools are comprised of, what you're able to access through Securely, what Securely even is. Um, so the purpose of the call here today is to pro provide just a nice high level overview of Securely, our tools, our offerings, what they can do for you guys, uh, things of that nature. That being said, um, this is uh, more high level in nature. So if and when you guys are ready to talk turkey, you want to start talking numbers, you want to, you know, see the UI, you want to start talking about proofs of concept, things of that nature. As Brian mentioned, reach out to us directly, reach out to Brian, we'll get you guys squared away and, and really dive into it in more detail uh, during those one-on-one follow-up follow calls. But again, here and now today, 
it's a nice little high, high level overview of what securely is, what tools are available to you, um, and what they can mean for your district. So with that said, um, as mentioned, reach out to us. We'll, we'll, we'll help get you guys squared away. When I say reach out to us, I'm, I'm referring to your presenters. So as Brian mentioned, uh, Craig and I both make up the Northeast team here at Securely. I do handle schools and districts that have between two and 3,000 seats and up. Uh, Craig handles schools and districts that have between two and 3,000 3, seats and, and below. So either way, we're both competent, we're both passionate, and we're both uh, really eager to chat with you guys as well. So we will have our contact information after this call, but there it is right in front of you. Please don't hesitate to ping us. We're more than happy to have more detailed discussions following. That being said, um, I want to frame the conversation with this. A lot of folks know about Securely as a content filtering solution. Maybe they know we do a little bit with email. Maybe they know we've got a dash of student safety. Maybe they even know that we have some tools for teachers. All of that is true. Uh, but there's more to the story. And, and really, I want to frame the conversation with this. Securely is an end-to-end -end solution. We have tools for teachers, yes. We have tools for students, yes. Administrators, parents, really anybody within the school community. The cool thing is through this Ocean Securely partnership, you can purchase tools either a la carte or via one of our predetermined bundles. Again, those are things we can talk about in more detailed one-on-one -on -one follow up calls. But just so you have a nice framework here, Tons of tools, very customizable as far as your procurement is concerned, um, and really a, a, an end-to-end an end offering that, that really supports the entire school community. Um, so during the call here today, we'll cover each of these tools, what they mean, what they do. But again, keep that notion in your back pocket, that end solution, that single pane of offering, um, really an umbrella, if you will. That said, uh, one of the tools that I want to start with here is, is filter. That's the one that, that uh, brought us to market. That's our claim to fame, so to speak. The filter is going to be a 100% cloud-based solution. It's built uniquely for K-12. There's no collegiate focus. There's no enterprise focus. It's all K-12. through um, The cool thing is that solution, and, and, and ready for this, this is, I think, a big, big piece here. It works on all devices, all locations, within all browsers. So again, cloud-based, built for schools, and works on everything, everywhere. So you really have, I, I got it myself because I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you really have that end-to-end -end offering, uh, that umbrella, if you will. So the cool thing is our filter is not only going to do your standard stuff, such as blocking things like porn and gaming, et cetera, but it's also going to uh, flag content indicative of self-harm, violence, suicide, cyberbullying, anxiety, depression, nudity, things of that nature, imminent, if you will. Um, that being said, we are able to flag those components based on uh, an, an emotionally intelligent algorithm we use, uh, emotionally intelligent AI, that looks not only at keywords and phrases, but also at context, at emotion. Um, so some of you may have heard me use this example before, and please don't hate on me for being a Philadelphia Flyers fan. But if I have a, a student that's on Facebook and posts something like, I can't take this anymore, I'm ending it all tonight, goodbye world, right? In that scenario, we are able to flag that content, even though it doesn't have a keyword there, I can't take it anymore, right? That context is indicative of potential self-harm. So in that scenario, we can flag that content using that emotionally intelligent AI I just mentioned. Whereas, on the other hand, if you have a student that's on Facebook and says something like, uh, you know, Philadelphia Flyers are going to kill the Boston Bruins this weekend, go Flyers. In that scenario, I use the word kill, but I'm only talking about hockey here. So um, our AI can mitigate that as a false positive. And again, that is uh, really scratching the, the, the surface of the power of this solution. Yet working on all the and, and blocking and flagging your standard stuff, but also paying it extra attention um, to, to content as far as student safety is concerned. So breaking those things out in a bit of detail. Um, the filter you heard me say, it's completely cloud-based. So we have many schools that deploy the solution right from the comfort of their couch, which is obviously um, a pretty comfortable place to be. There's no hardware that I need to send you. You don't need to have to you know, watch for any shipping. It's, it's, it's nice and easy. It's completely cloud-based and get up, set up and running pretty quickly here. 15 minutes is what the slide reflects. That's certainly uh, possible. We've done it many, many times before, and we'll do it many, many times still. Um, that being said, majority of take between 30 and 60 minutes. So plop down on your couch, work with us. We'll connect you one-on-one -on -one with an engineer. Nice little uh, partnership there together. 
and you will have the ability again to roll out the filter onto all of your devices specifically from, from that signal call with the engineer, nice and easy. Uh, the cool thing is, I think it was Dennis, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned um, having some questions about authentication and things of that nature. Again, I, I want to talk to you guys about that in more detail during follow-up calls after this one here and now, but just to kind of uh, hit the nail on the head here, we do have a lot to do with authentication. So not only are we easy to deploy, um, but we're also going to align with your existing Google infrastructures, or we also integrate with Azure, Office 365, we integrate with Active Directory. So really, you guys take your existing, uh, existing structures, we link arms together, and what you're able to do there is you're not only able to have very easy authentication, we have single scenarios in many instances, users don't have to manually plug their information in, it's very seamless, it's very easy, and it leverages what's existing. With that, you not only have wonderful user-based visibility, you know, who posted what, who searched what, who typed what, at what time, obviously timestamps are associated, but you're also going to have the ability to um, um, click into those thumbnails as well. So if you, for example, have a YouTube video that comes up, you want to click that YouTube video thumbnail, it'll bring you right to the YouTube and you can see with your own eyes the, the video at length. So user-based visibility um, and even a lot of granularity as far as that visibility is concerned with the ability to click onto thumbnails and things of that nature. That integration with your existing structures such as Google and Azure not only provides that user-based visibility, but it also enables you to get creative as far as which OUs receive which policies. You can customize that. So let's say you want something a little bit more lenient for the older kids, maybe something a little bit more restrictive for the younger kids, maybe something completely different for staff you have the power to make those adjustments. And the cool thing is, uh, I mentioned connecting you with an engineer if and when you, you, want, uh, you want to get started with securely. During that call, we'll ensure you're not only successfully rolled out and deployed, but also configured properly. So the engineer will work with you to map those policies, to customize those policies and make sure they're assigned appropriately. Uh, it's making sure you're not only using the solution to its fullest extent, but in a way that's tailored to your expectations. So quick and easy, cloud-based, highly customizable, and again, that easy to use from an authentication slash uh, um, structure integration, if you will. Um, one of my favorite parts about working with Securely is not only, again, that ease of use, that approach, that single pane of brain, um, but that focus on student safety. When I started here a few years ago, that was uh, unlike anything that I'd seen before or since. Um, and the, the, the folks behind the scenes really live and breathe that message. And I think that that, um, you know, those, those, those um, approaches, that mentality, that focus on student safety really man manifests itself beautifully in the solution. Um, and one of the ways that it does so is, as, as we discussed earlier, that AI-based context analysis. So I already gave you guys my example of somebody's on Facebook and, and they some say something Flyers are going to kill the Bruins. We're talking about hockey. Whereas if another student is on Facebook and says something like, I can't take this anymore, many get off feet, that AI can navigate those things and based on context, based on sentiment, not just keywords, really make uh, critical decisions. And that being said, a lot of people ask me, hey, Maris, how much does it cost to have that AI? How much does it cost to have that self-harm and, and all of that stuff? Um, nothing. It's built right into the solution. It's included. It's found and it's critical. Um, so if and when you want to see numbers for the solution, you'll never see another line item that says, you know, par monitoring that is built right in and you can rest assured that comes with a filter if and when you decide to move forward with that. That being said, visibility is obviously a critical thing as well. So you got a solution that not only blocks and flags and does all those, uh, but you have a live activity feed to ensure that there's a repository for those activities. So you'll be able to access that 24-365 you can segment out if you want to look at a certain OU, a certain student, a certain group of students. Maybe you just want to, you know, look at everything from the top down. Very easy to sort through, very easy to, um, to, to, to have that visibility and to make sure that you are privy to the goings on, if you will. So that live activity feed, again, as mentioned, is, is accessible 24-7, 365. It provides all the information you'll need associated, um, including the user's uh, information, the site visited, the timestamp, things of that nature. Um, the cool thing is there's also this notion of shared reporting. So obviously it's awesome to have a solution that provides visibility, but if you have an influx of visibility and one person that 
access it. Um, is it really accessible? We don't think so. Um, so we've given you guys the ability to really segment that out and ensure that the right information is delivered to the right person. What I mean by that is this. Um, I guess there are a couple ways that that, that that can be sliced, if you will. The first is that you're able to share the reporting. So if you want to quickly download a PDF that was um, you know, a, a group of users or a single user's activity history, you can very easily download that within the UI. Um, I usually, when I'm, I'm doing my live UI walkthroughs, I say count to two or three seconds and you have information after clicking a button. So it's very quick. Um, and you can determine which format that's pulled out in. So if you want to pull a CSV file, if you want to pull a PDF, whatever your preference is, we can align with it. Um, the next thing is you can schedule reported out. So let's say you've got a couple different brick and mortar locations and you want the heads of those locations, the principal, like a guidance counselor to, to receive reports weekly for the goings on that occurs uh, for the OUs under their view, you can structure securely accordingly. So if you want, you know, building A to receive a report every week for these OUs, cool, nice and easy, we can put that together. You want school B to receive a report for their, their OUs, very easy to put that together. So again, you can share the load together and make sure that uh, that activity is, is disseminated in a way that's actionable, which I think is cool. The next very important thing as far as reporting is concerned is the notion of delegating administrators to receive imminent activities. So at Securely, we essentially divide alerts into two different categories, blocked activities and flagged activities, okay? So blocked activities is going to be something like if a child is, is trying to access Playboy right here. You want to block that. You don't want them to be able to have access to that. But in the same breath, you don't need to be alerted every single time somebody tries to check playboy.com, right? There might be an end. You've got a lot to do. We don't need to bombard you with those things. So in that scenario, that's an example of activity that we would block. We'd block that for the student, and we'd show you evidence of that occurrence within the reports, okay, as you see right here. However, I'm going to pull from an example I used a couple minutes ago. If you have that student that's on Facebook and post something like, I can't take this anymore, I'm ending it all tonight, goodbye, right? Or how to tie a noose, or how many pills does it take to do this, right? Something of that nature. We don't want to block that and let it sit in, in within your UI. Rather, we're going to flag that alert, and we're going to send that alert to your delegated admin in real time. Within the UI, you can separate these two. So you've got a repository for your block deck, you've got a repository for your flag activities. We'll make sure that that's really easily separated. But the main piece is for those activities that are imminent, again, indications of self-harm, violence, suicide, things of that nature, that's examples of activities that we will flag. And as mentioned, send to your delegated admin in real time. The cool thing is you can do who receives what alerts. So let's say you want all the flagged activities for the younger kids to go to admins A and B, but you want all the flagged activities for the older kids to go to admins C and D. Awesome. We can structure securely accordingly. Um, so again, a lot of visibility and a lot of granularity to ensure you're tailored to, 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 to the school's preferences ultimately. Next, this is not only one of my favorite parts about Securely, um, but a lot of people I keep hearing within the state are, are very interested in this as well. So I'm excited to share with you guys. Home is essentially a parent portal. We refer to it as home. That's, that's the term you'll hear us use. Um, but essentially, that gives parents a level of visibility and control the amounts of which are determined by the district. We'll, we'll talk about that here in just a few moments. Um, but just really important to note that often parents almost don't know they need or want something like this until they have it in front of them. And especially through this pandemic and remote slash hybrid learning, this, you know, locking arms with parents and making sure that that visibility is shared and there's that team approach, that communication, that open line of communication, if you will, if you will um, that's proven to be absolutely critical again especially in the midst of this remote learning environment that we're engaged in so as a result our, our numbers of parental adoption has really skyrocketed over the last year you can see we've got over two million parents and, and counting using this solution um, so it's 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 top notch and especially again today's environment certainly a critical component here um, so really what home does is it gives parents a couple different things. It gives them the ability to check their kids online activity. So 
How many of you parents have picked your kids up from school and say, you know, hey, Tommy, what'd you learn today? How was school? And Tommy kind of rolls his eyes. Oh, it was cool. Didn't really learn much. Nice though, puts their headphones in, right? Um, in that scenario, sometimes there's, there's you know, a lack of, of visibility and it can be challenging, it can be frustrating, um, and it can kind of uh, mitigate open lines of communication. So with Securely's home tool, you'll be able to, as a parent, have an understanding of what your kids are checking out during, during the school day um, and even outside of, of school hours. So long story short, if you have kids that are even, you know, studying a certain topic, World War II, for example, in history class, you pick up little Tommy from, from school and you ask him what he's learning about and he kind of rolls his eyes and says nothing. Now you can check your home and you say, oh, I, I see you're looking at, at D-Day, Battle of the Bulge, whatever the case may be. Did you know grandfather fought in that? Did you? And you have the ability to have these conversations with them. So this isn't a tool that's, you know, a mousetrap. It's a gotcha. It's always looking. It's big brother. It's, it's really not about that. It's that visibility. It's that transparency. It's, it's that notion of dig, digital citizenship and helping share that load together, not only as school administrators and teachers, but also parents, again, a school community. So parents will have that visibility through this home tool. More importantly, if there are imminent notifications, those flag activities, so again, content indicative of self-harm, violence, et cetera, things are concerning, parents can opt in for those notifications as well. So not only do they have visibility into talking points, if you will, but they also have visibility into things that might require some, some attention and, and some uh, more pertinent conversations. Um, that being said, we also give parents the ability to customize their rules. So their house, their rules, you guys can right there. Uh, so you guys as a district can allow parents the ability to determine, hey, I actually don't want my kids checking out when the devices are home, or I don't see an issue with it. I can let my kids check out Facebook when the device is home. You can give parents the ability to make their own rules. And the cool thing is what the Smiths do at their house could differ from what the Jones their house. And either way, the Smiths and the Jones have the ability to make their own rules um, based on their preferences. They will have also the ability to pause the internet. So let's have a Christmas dinner a couple of weeks to go. Mom and dad sit down, kids are around the table and they want an eyes up environment. They want to maybe play a family game or they want to have good you know, eye contact. It's a weird thing nowadays. Uh, but if they wanted something like that, they can literally pause the internet to turn their kids' devices into paperweights through that duration, whether it's an hour, two hours, through the whole dinner, maybe the whole day, parents have the ability to do so. All of this is amazing, it's exciting, and it's obviously actionable, especially in today's environment. But the coolest part about all of this is, that's the second piece to this equation. The first piece is that the district sets the rules and the para parameters first. So you guys determine how much visibility you want a parent to have. Do you wanna show them everything? Do you wanna show them nothing? Do you wanna show them just the at-home activity? You guys make those rules. Same thing from a control perspective. Do you want to give parents full control? Do you want to give them zero control? Do you want to give them some restricted control? So for example, let's say there's something like porn. It's a non-negotiable. You want to block porn on and off site, but then something like social media, you want to open that up to parents to be able to determine whether or not their kids can access that on the devices off site. You structure securely home accordingly. And once the school district has set the rules, so to speak, then parents can go in and make their changes based on what you guys have, have put in place. Um, so really, again, the, the, the ability to find a balance between teamwork, but also ensuring that the school is still driving the car, so to speak, which I understand is an important thing nowadays. Um, so again, you do have the ability to work together for the kids' benefit, but ultimately the school still is holding the reins, so to speak, which is a pretty important thing. And uh, needless to say, parents can obviously opt out of this. So let's say the district you know, leverages home and they move forward with it and they roll it out to their students, or pardon me, their parents. Um, parents still have the ability to opt out if they're not interested. So the cool thing is nobody's forcing anybody to do anything here. It's all uh, really theirs for the taking if they'd like to take advantage of it and be among the two million parents that are currently using it. The next tool to talk about is really easy to understand and to discuss when you have a good understanding of filter. Reason being is filter and auditor are separate tools and they work very similarly in that both tools are going to block things like porn and gaming, et cetera. Both tools are also going to flag content indicative of self-harm, violence, cyberbullying, et cetera. The difference is 
Filter is going to look at browser activity, so major search engines, YouTube, social media, et cetera, whereas Auditor is going to hone in on the email platform. So inbound and outbound emails, attachments, Google Docs, Drive, OneDrive, et cetera. Um, so really, Auditor is going to, as mentioned, you've got inbound and outbound emails, you've got files on Drive and OneDrive, you've got attachments, you've got Google Docs and comments. Um, you really have a wide ranging tool here. Um, and the cool thing is, oh, actually, I'm going to go back here. There's one piece I do want to hone in on here where it says attachments. Um, I think some of you have, have probably heard me use this as an example before, but I, I'm going to use it again here now because I think it's a pretty important thing to say. I flew up to the Midwest last year, actually the year prior, before we, uh, before we were involved in this pandemic here in lockdown. And I met with a school up there that's using uh, Auditor, and they're using it specifically for the attachments and the monitoring of their attachments. And one of the schools shared with me that they had a student that checked out cartoon porn, uploaded it to the school drive, there was attachments going through, it, it, it was kind of a mess. Interestingly, there was no text associated with that image. And more importantly, that image was a cartoon. As mentioned, it, it was art, it was drawn, right? Um, there was no human skin tone present, but our engines were still able to flag that and deliver that to the appropriate administrators, again, even though it was art, and even though there was no text associated. So uh, when I chatted with the school, she was kind of giggling a little bit, but she said it, it, was, it was incredible. It was wildly inappropriate, so it definitely needed to be blocked. Um, but it just, it was incredible that you guys were able to pick up on that and deliver that accordingly. So again, we're not only gonna be looking at text within these areas, but also imagery as well, even if text isn't present. Um, these are going to be similar components to the filter piece. Again, that AI-based context analysis, I, I won't use my flyers versus Bruins example again, but you guys get it. I mean, even if there isn't a keyword or phrase there, um, you can see an example right here. People will be happy without me. There's no kill, there's no hate, there's no harm, there's no anything like that, but the context is indicative and that would be an example of something that we would flag. So you can rest assured that that AI is a part of not only auditor, but again, filter as well. And just like filter, you won't see an extra line item on the quote for that self-harm piece that's built right in, that's included with the whole solution, which is pretty critical and awesome. Um, similar to filter as well, you can set up delegated alerting. So let's say you want to have a flower from auditor to go to admins A and B, the older kids, and then C and D for the younger kids. Again, you guys structure that accordingly and we'll, we'll easily align with that. Um, the, the, uh, the confidence scores, this is a little bit different from filter, but I think this is certainly noteworthy. Um, essentially, securely assigns confidence scores to notifications, and you guys determine which confidence scores you want to get notifications for. To explain that, I've got two examples for you. Let's say two different emails go out within the school. The first email, it, it, it's an awful example, but it is, it's the reality of today. Let's say the first email is something indicative of, hey, I'm bringing a gun to school tomorrow. I'm, I'm tired of this, right? In that scenario, it said gun, I'm bringing a gun to school, yada, yada. That is something that we would definitely flag and we would assign a confidence score of five to. We know for certain what they're talking about. We know what this is and we know this needs to be addressed right away. The other email, let's say, comes from the media department and it's, hey guys, the shooting schedule for this week is actually changed. Rather than shooting on Tuesday, we're gonna shoot on Thursday. Let me know if anybody has any issues with that. Again, I hear shooting, I hear shooting, I hear shooting. Um, but that would be an example of something that we would flag, but we would likely assign a confidence score of two or three to. Um, so in that scenario, you guys really determine, I only want to receive flagged alerts with confidence scores of three or above. I only want to receive flagged alerts that have confidence scores of five only. You guys determine what you want to receive alerts for and obviously will respond accordingly. So that's a, a newer component to securely and it's just been uh, wildly important as you guys can only imagine. The next piece of the puzzle, gosh, I feel like each tool I say, this one's my favorite, this one's so important, this one is so important, and I truly mean that with each one, and the same can definitely be said for this 24 tool here. And the reason being is this, let's say filter or auditor flags uh, an alert at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. Let's say that alert is, I can't take this anymore, I'm sending it off tonight, right? We've used that example. 
Let's say that alert comes in at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. We'll flag that. We'll send that to your delegated admin in real time, just as we've discussed so far. Let's say that same alert comes in at Sunday morning at 3 a.m., right? We're going to handle it the same way. We'll flag that. We'll send that to your delegated admin in real time. But because it's 4 a.m., it's the middle of the morning, chances are your delegated admin aren't going to be around their phone. They're not going to be awake. They won't be able to receive that alert in a timely manner. In that scenario, well, I should say that scenario is why we've created our, our 24 tool, which is a team of specially trained analysts that look at flagged alerts 24-7, 365. They look for patterns. They look for trends. They compile a more complete report of that user. So let's say the student that sent that alert at 4 a.m. has a history of flagged alerts specifically indicative of self-harm. In that scenario, our 2014 will not only let you guys know that that alert has gone out, but also compile that complete report of their previous flagged activities so you have a, a, a full picture to really talk to the student about. Out. So the cool thing about 24 is that can be applied to either filter and or auditor. Um, and it's really an extra set of eyes that has the ability to not only provide more detailed reports, but also, again, uh, contact your delegated admin in more pressing ways. So rather than sending an alert via email, they can pick up the phone and call them. The other important aspect of 24 is they can leverage local law enforcement as well if need be, which is a pretty critical piece here. So I work with many schools that structure their 24 usage like this. Let's say they've applied 24 to both filter and auditor, and they say, hey, Maris, listen, um, we want to make sure that if an alert comes in Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., I want your 24 team to contact these uh, school contacts first. Here's number one, number two, number three, contact them in this order, and please contact them using these phone numbers and or these email addresses. You guys really down to the to the finest detail to determine what that looks like. But then the school district says, and outside of those hours, so if there's an alert that comes in, you know, after hours, Monday through Friday, or even over the weekend, we want you to contact local law enforcement first and then contact our school contacts, right? So you guys don't have to leverage local law enforcement if you don't want to, but obviously you can integrate them into a 2014 to ensure that even if it is after hours, if it's the middle of the night, if it's a holiday, if it's the weekend, uh, that you have somebody that is looking at those flagged activities and has the ability to contact the right people immediately if need be. One final note about our 2014, um, they're not college kids, you know, looking for an internship or anything like that. These people have pretty detailed backgrounds. Um, some of them have worked in the K-12 space. Some of them have psychology degrees. Some of them are former counselors. Some of them have, I even had a, a friend in the office that, that worked specifically within the human trafficking um, arena. So there's just, there's a lot of focus. There's a lot of uh, uh, credentials that really lend itself to um, that specially trained analyst and the ability to, again, flag the right things and get them to the right people in the right time. The final tool I want to talk about, and then I'll zip my lips here, I tend to talk too much about the things I'm, I'm passionate about. So you'll hear soon from, from Craig, get yourself ready, my friend. Um, but the last tool that I want to talk about here and now is, is tip line. It's relatively self-explanatory, but it's still noteworthy in and of itself. Uh, really, the, tool, the, the tip line tool is an anonymous reporting structure where anybody within the school community can send a tip to the school 24-7, 365. They can text, they can call, they can send an email, they can submit a web form, tons of different ways they can access that. Students can access the tip line, parents can access the tip line, teachers can access the tip line, administrators, it's for the school community. And the cool thing is, regardless of whether or not you, you purchase the 24 tool, if you decide to move forward with tip line, you can rest assured that the 24 team is the one monitoring those alerts and the same thing. They will put together a complete report if a tip is received. So let's say a student sends a tip to the school, uh, the 2014 will make sure that with that tip is any additional background information associated with that user, those users, those students, again, to make sure you've got a complete picture there. So uh, this is the last time I'll, I'll, I can't actually promise this. this. I'll try to make this the last time I, I say this single pane of glass offering. Um, but with Securely, again, you really have just such a layered, robust offering. And you can see how when you use these tools together, it really creates a nice intertwined ecosystem, ultimately, where everything works beautifully together. And as we know, we're only as good as the sum of our parts here. 
Um, and the sum of Securely's parts is pretty powerful and together they, they are profound. So um, again, I'll zip my lips, Craig, I'll toss you the ball, my friend, um, and he's gonna talk to you about some, some other pretty critical tools in the space here as well. Before we move on to Craig, um, just a couple quick things in the chat I wanted to address. Mm -hmm. um, Dennis asked yeah. the question about um, devices and how, if there's a limit to the amount of devices that they can put securely on. Nope. You can use it on one device, you can use it on hundreds of thousands of devices. Great question, but no, la no, uh, no limit whatsoever. Okay. And then this one is sort of answered by another member, but uh, Ryan Richard had asked, uh, securely works with uh, Cisco Umbrella. Um, um, it, 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 there's a little nuance there, um, Ryan, um, when it comes to what you mean by with, uh, but it can work in conjunction with Cisco Umbrella. Um, they don't, they don't uh, talk to each other necessarily, um, but you can use both of them at the same time. Uh, there's a little bit of caveats with DNS filtering if you're using that, but yeah. we can discuss that after the call if you want to go a little more in depth with that. Um, Brian uh, Berkowitz asked, uh, how would this work with BYOD program or unmanaged devices? Um, yeah. But if you want to yeah. do that quickly. Absolutely, that's a great question. So let's 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 take it two different ways. From an unmanaged perspective, privacy is pretty critical to us. So if the device is unmanaged and it's off-site. Uh, we're not going to force authentication. We're not going to force visibility. We're not going to do any of those things. Now, if a student manually plugs in their school issued credentials, thus authenticating them to securely, we will be monitoring and they'll have visibility into that. They'll know that we're monitoring. However, again, when that device is off site, if it's not managed nor owned by the school, we can't force that student to log in with their school credentials, which is essentially the green light that, that gets securely started and monitoring and filtering on that device. So from an unmanaged perspective, offsite is, is, is not something that we'll touch, again, unless the student physically plugs in their credentials and, and essentially uh, um, um, sparks that green light, so to speak, from a filtering perspective. If the device is unmanaged onsite on the school's network, different story. If it's unmanaged on site within the school's network, you still can um, force them to, to authenticate and use that, uh, use that monitoring because again, they're, they're under your purview, they're under your umbrella. BYOD uh, um, is handled similarly. So if you have a BYOD device coming on site that is used by a user that has school issued credentials, so a teacher or a student that's bringing their personal on site, um, they can log in and authenticate in the same manner they would on a, on a managed device. So you guys can determine if you want those BYOD devices that have the ability to log in with their school credentials to follow the same path as, as non-BYOD devices. On the flip side, if you have uh, parents or guest speakers coming onto the network that are BYOD but don't have the ability to log in with their school credentials slash authenticate, in that scenario, we can support either a single or multiple guest networks that don't require authentication uh, but are still CEPA compliant, will still block porn, will still do all of those things. Um, so these are, these are things that we can hammer out together in more detail during your deployments uh, with the engineers and or during your one-on-one -on -one calls with us. But essentially, there are many ways that we can handle it. Um, and it's really a matter of what your preferences are and then us putting that together on the back end. Um, and then Dennis asked again uh, also, is uh, how long is the traffic, uh, data traffic retained? So the logs, how long do you retain the logs? Yeah, yeah. So we'll retain that through, well, you'll have the ability to access that from your seat, I believe, for the duration of the school year. Um, that being said, as long as the student is still enrolled in the district, uh, even if it's um, years past the, when the activity is, you can reach out to us and we can provide that, uh, the, that, those activities as well. So again, that data is retained for as long as the, this, the, the student is a part of the district. You, as a district, can access that information through the duration of the school year. And if you need that information years after it occurred, you just simply reach out to us. Oh, Marissa, is your mic cut out? Can you guys hear me okay? There we go. Goodbye. Perfect. About that. 
the, the last of that? Did all that come through okay? Yes. I, um, yeah, I, I, think, I think you answered that question. Um, quick question. Uh, are there any screen sharing monitoring features that teachers can use in the classroom feature? I'll tell you what, that's a brilliant segue into what Craig's about to talk about. Um, so he'll address that in more detail momentarily, but I will say this. We do have screen sharing capabilities. Um, so you will have the ability to, um, to, to see, well, you as the teacher will have the ability to see the screens. Um, that is definitely something we'll be able to provide. Again, Craig will be talking about that aspect in more detail momentarily as that ability falls to the tools you see here in front of you, which is classroom. Okay. And um, the, another question was uh, for Windows devices, is there an agent that runs all the time on the device for filtering? So we're agentless. There are a handful of different deployment methods, uh, depending on what device you're using. Or, for example, there's a Chrome extension. There is uh, what's referred to as Smart Pack. I won't get too deep into that right now, but you can consider that as an auto-intelligent pack file. Um, and then there's also a, a standard DNS redirect. So again, agentless, but regardless of your deployment method, whether it's a, a Windows device or a Chromebook or an iPad, um, we do have the ability to, to stick with that student uh, indefinitely, again, as long as they are enrolled um, in the district as well, regardless of whether they're on-site or off-site. Great question. All right. Well, as the time rolls on, we want to make sure we keep going. So uh, let's bring on Craig. All right. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Craig Cameron. Again, I work as long as I'm Marissa. Uh, you know, her and I will work hand in hand, make sure you guys are taken care of. The only tough part is, is that she is a Flyers fan, but we'll take it with a grain of salt. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about here today is our classroom and, and, and MDM solution. Uh, you know, I, I, I recognize a few uh, participants are on the call here today, and, and I'm sure they've heard me say this before, that I, I truly do really like our classroom solution. Uh, but at the same time, I'm glad it wasn't available when I was a student because uh, I probably would have gotten in trouble a couple of times. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Marissa, if you just want to hit the, the next slide. So our classroom solution is going to work uh, whether you're – physically at school in the classroom uh, or those distance learning days right and uh, you know it's kind of we're doing a lot more distance learning uh, today than we are in person so it's, it's a great feature to have really helps keep your students focused gives your teachers visibility uh, to what your students are doing making sure that they're on task uh, and also helps teachers uh, have their ducks in a row to make sure they're being as efficient as possible. So, um, you know, we have a feature built in there where teachers can go in, save one off websites and create folders, of websites that they want to use for upcoming lessons, have that readily available. Um, then we also have some main features and functionality around, um, you know, site lock. So if I, what I can do as a teacher, I can go ahead, uh, provide a site or a group of websites that I want my students to be using. It'll lock those, devices into those websites and make sure that they can't open up any other tabs, right? So for the example of what if there's an online test, right? I can go ahead, grab that URL for that online test, push out to my students via that site lock, and I know that they're not going to be able to open up any other tabs to look at Google and, and try to find answers, anything like that. Um, we can also lock screens completely. So what that enables me to do as a teacher is you know, if I'm going through my lesson and I kind of get in the blank stairs, glazed over, everyone seems kind of <laughs> lost, I can go ahead and lock down the screens. That way I can ensure everyone's staying focused on, you know, whether I'm in person going something over the whiteboard or maybe it's something just virtually, hey, everyone seems kind of lost. Let's, let's get some clarification, get things back on track. Um, from a teacher standpoint, the visibility, as I mentioned they are going to have a classroom view of what each student is looking at currently on their browser. Uh, they can also switch it over to a tab view. Uh, what this does is this allows the teachers to see each student's tabs that they have open. Um, and you can kind of see a glimpse of that in the background on the, that picture there on that slide. Uh, and you also see little trash icons as well. So let's just say that someone's looking at ESPN.com. I can go ahead and hit that trash barrel and make sure that they're staying focused. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, right, you're gonna have that visibility. Uh, you're gonna be able to see those tabs. Um, 
And part of that is the history portion, right? So I can go into each individual student and look at their history. Uh, that's gonna show me their history for their browsing. Uh, we're gonna provide you time spent on the websites that that student has, vis has excuse me, have visited uh, in real time. Right, so let's just say that a student has five tabs open, uh, one of them being car and driver, right? Uh, but I know that, or I can see that on that time spent, car and driver only has 30 seconds accumulated, while I see, um, you know, mathgames.com, which we're currently using, uh, actively accumulating time. So I know that they're focused and staying on tasks and using the sites that I've uh, provided them. Next slide. Now, another great feature of our classroom solution is our communication that the teachers can have with students and vice versa. Uh, one thing, the first thing that we'll talk about here is students being able to virtually raise their hand. Uh, essentially what it is, is if I'm a student, I have a question, I can go ahead and click raise my hand. On the teacher side of things, I'll receive a big orange icon with a big raised hand saying, hey, uh, you know, John Smith has raised their hand. Um, that prompts me to do a couple different things, right? And I think it really depends on the learning environment uh, as well as your teaching style, right? So I can go ahead and if we're at school, say, hey, John, looks like you had a question, what can I help you with? Uh, maybe I know that um, you know John's really shy or it's a virtual learning day. I can go ahead and send him a message uh, via our chat functionality. Now the good thing about this is that it's only between teachers and students. Students cannot chat amongst each other with this and I typically get a pretty good side of relief on that one there. Uh, but it really just helps ensure that you're able to communicate with your students in, in any way, shape or form. And you know, again, depending on your teaching style, your relationship, that, that child's you know, preferences and personality, we're giving you the uh, flexibility to be able to communicate with them appropriately. Another thing that we do offer from a communication standpoint uh, is an announcement feature where I, let's just say, you know, again, we're, we're doing that online quiz. I want to send out an announcement to everyone saying, hey, there's five minutes left. I push it out to my students and the students have to acknowledge that notification before they can continue browsing. Uh, so it really eliminates the, uh, you know, I never got it scenario, depending on what the lesson was for that day, so on and so forth. Now, from an MDM standpoint, uh, this is where uh, we're going to be able to uh, have pre-approved apps uh, that you can push out to those devices. Uh, again, as you can see, here, iOS only, right? We're typically talking about iPads in this scenario. Um, I can go in, uh, submit content to be pre-approved, uh, and very similar functionality to our classroom offering. Uh, I'm going to be able to have different sites created, folders created that's readily available uh, to have uh, pushed out to my iPad users and that teachers can go ahead and pre-approve and get all squared away. Run at the next slide, Marissa. And a big part of that, and one of the things I really like about our MDM is this custom app approval process. So what this allows you to do is create a process for apps to be approved. So as opposed to teachers and coming to you continuously, hey, can you approve this app? Can you get this app approved, can you make this readily available to me, right? You can come in, create a super easy process, so that way not only do I as the admin have visibility to where uh, these apps are coming in from, what apps are being requested to be approved, and getting them approved on time, uh, but now you eliminate teachers, faculty, staff coming to you saying, hey, can you get this approved, can you get this done? They can come right in here, check out where that app is and that app approval process. Once it's approved, again, it's readily available. Uh, you can even set up to where students can go ahead and download these apps freely or make it from a teacher perspective where they have to push out to students. Uh, again, really depends on your environment you set up what you guys wanna have uh, you know, that process look like. So kind of the biggest question I think that's gonna come out today is you know, how do we get started with securely? Uh, you know, reach out to Marissa and I, we're, we're always readily available for you guys. Um, email, phone, um, whatever works for you. And uh, from there, we'll try and schedule a call with you, right? And, and the main point of that call and that discussion is to really understand what you're looking to accomplish from a student safety and technology standpoint. You know, as, as Brian said, you know, we're a partner to you guys. We're not here to sell you anything. 
you know, we want to make sure that we're aligning with your goals and we're making sense for you. We're not trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You know, as you've seen here today, we offer a multitude of different features and products and they're not all going to make sense for everyone, right? So we want to make sure that we're building you a custom solution uh, that's going to make sense for your school, your environment, and keeping your students safe. Um, so part of that conversation, once we ask you know, some information from you, maybe we'll show you a quick glimpse of our UI. Uh, if you feel it makes sense, then we can go ahead and set you up on a 30-day proof of concept, let you get into securely, uh, test it in your environment, make sure it's a great fit, um, and you know, take it from there. Uh, should you want to go ahead and move forward, then you know, we'll go ahead and get you all squared away. Um, you'll work with Marissa and I through that whole process. Uh, then we will transition you to our custom su customer success team uh, where you do have a dedicated customer success manager and um, you'll always be in, uh, in good hands with security. Okay, we have a couple more questions um, in the chat here. I do wanna be respectful of everyone's time. We got about seven minutes left. <clears throat> um, and, and this final note is definitely important, but before we go on to that final note, um, there's two part question here. I'm not skipping over you, Kim. I just want to get to this one first. Um, so the question was, uh, are you able to prevent screen monitoring when kids are off site and sort of, uh, you know, if they're off site, is there, is it based on being off site or based on a scheduled time period? How, how would that work? Yeah. So we'll, you'll set it up on the back end from a time basis. Uh, and that can be done manually. We can tie in with Google Classroom or um, you know, other solutions as well. Uh, but it's all done on, on a per time basis. That way, you know, it really eliminates the uh, potential if someone decided to try and uh, look at a student screen outside of those hours at an inappropriate time. Can you prevent, <clears throat> can you prevent it using Google Classroom? So if they're attending a class, that's the only time the teacher can access that screen or? Yep, and, and again, we'll tie into Google Classroom and you can do it from a time-based thing. The other part of it too is when you go to start a, a class session, um, think of it as kind of a virtual classroom roster that you'll see in front of you with check boxes with your students. So you'll know exactly who's supposed to be in your class. Um, teachers will have a drop down of the classes that they're assigned to pick the class for that period. And then um, you'll go ahead, take virtual attendance, start your class, which enables you to see your student screens. And then it also enables you obviously to have that, those features and functionality built within that classroom session. Okay. Right. Can I, can I jump in here and ask a question? Because maybe I can rephrase it. So, so the issue is we have some privacy concerns. Our ACLU here in Rhode Island is very involved and they have a big, big issue with uh, school districts uh, monitoring kids devices when they're not physically on campus or in front of us. So restricting by hour will not help because if a child's at home, um, not participating in the school day, but at home, their screen is still viewable. And the ACLU in some of their arguments has taken the, the approach of, well, what if the parent is using it? So um, for us, I saw somebody else put in restrict by IP. Uh, I'm currently a GoGuardian user who's contemplating making the switch over to securely. Um, and one of the features that GoGuardian makes real easy for us is we can restrict by IP and or we can strict we can restrict by time. So I think that's what some of us are are starting to uh, to try and drill in here right here. What uh, what options do we have for restricting? Is it just time? Yeah, I don't believe we do restricting by IP. I think it is just on that time base and that scheduling. Uh, Marissa, please you know jump in here if you have any additional comments. Yes, um, absolutely. So largely, what we'll do is we'll restrict by user. Um, you can obviously take them out of your roster either indefinitely or just temporarily. Um, teachers can also create what's referred to as kind of office hours. So essentially, you know, if, if these are your allotted class periods, great. That's when we'll be able to see the screens. But outside of that, you won't be able to see screens as a teacher, but you'll still be able to communicate and talk and things like that of that nature. That being said, one, one slide that I actually took out of this, but, uh, but I think it's worth noting here and now, um, is if there's a feature or a set or something of that nature that is critical, uh, but it's not currently available within the solution, we have the ability essentially to um, put that on our developers to do list. So essentially what it is, there's an upvoting system where let's say it's like, hey, great solution guys, but that one thing is missing from that tool. 
awesome. Let us know that information. We'll send that to the, uh, to the developers through a platform we have on our end. And then from there, the more schools that require that solution or rather that feature, um, the higher up on the developers to do list it goes. So uh, through the duration, I'm trying to speak quickly from a time perspective. So I apologize. I'm not giving you as much detail as I would like here. Um, but really, especially through this whole uh, remote learning endeavor that we're involved in, we've really honed and refined this specific solution classroom among others uh, to ensure that it's aligned not only with school preferences, but also remote learning and hybrid learning challenges, such as the one, Michael, that you've described here and now. Um, so again, I believe we're, we are able to restrict by user, not IP. There are things that we can do from a, a time perspective to, to hone in on that. The worst case scenario, if there's something that you believe is, is truly missing, um, we can get that in front of the right people and get that changed and amended immediately as we've proven to do through the duration of this uh, pandemic and, and remote learning and things of that nature. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Kim, Kim uh, Ramos had the question about, uh, is there a PD available? What kind of PD is available for teachers in the classroom management? PD? Yeah, professional development. So what, what uh, do yep. they have that can help them understand how it works? Yep, yep. So we have um, pre-recorded webinars. Uh, we have uh, one pages that we can send you, but we also have, uh, as, as of, uh, I think November, we, we launch it is uh, you can, uh, get virtual training and then three hour blocks where we can say up well, as you know with professional services and we can go ahead and do that virtual training with your teachers make sure that they're getting comfortable with the solution understand the ins and outs and uh, get them all squared away um, and quickly before the last slide um, I know that the system itself has the ability to disable off-campus filtering does that include the other features as well and when it does off campus, is that that's based? Is that based on IP? That feature? Yeah. So it does. It's all based on IP, right? And that's how we do it from a take-home policy standpoint, or for that BYOD setup. How our securely knows that it's going off-site, um, and that'll work for other solutions as well within securely. Um, as Marissa mentioned, IP is not one for, or not how we do classroom at this moment, uh, but there are other parts of securely that do leverage the IP address there. Okay, all right. Um, and if you wanna just finish up, we get about a minute. Yeah, so uh, just real quick, uh, 30 second overview here. Uh, you know, we're really uh, tight with compliances and student data privacy, all the above. So as you can see here, we're, our number one layer is I keep safe. And I think that's really just top notch, you know, it ties in the FERPA, COPA, et cetera. Uh, they do random audits throughout the year. And, you know, we're always, you know, we're always tied to I keep safe, which is most important. Uh, you guys can read the other two here, but one thing that I do want to bring up, cause I know we're tight on against the clock here is that, uh, if there are other student data privacy agreements specific to districts or states, you know, bring it to us. We are very flexible in that regard. Uh, we've yet to come across a student privacy, student data privacy agreement that we have not signed. Um, so, you know, we're, we're happy to work with you. Uh, at the end of the day, I think what's most important to Mercer is just communication and transparency, you know, help us help you. And, and, you know, we're, we're here to make sure that your students are safe. Okay. And uh, Namoto, you want to close us out? Sure. Uh, thank you everyone again for joining our session. Uh, again, as, just as a friendly reminder, this uh, will be recorded. Uh, it is, it has been recorded, sorry. Uh, and I can share that link out uh, to the group after. Um, right now I'm going to ask Dave, did you have anything you wanted to say before we close? Well, you know, I always do. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> no, my, my, my first thing was to thank uh, uh, Marissa and Craig. Uh, you guys have been great through the whole process. Um, I want everybody to understand that this is a, a, a process that was generated uh, by our membership in working with us, um, saying, you know, we want some additions to the portfolio. Uh, we looked at the market. We looked at all sorts of things to see what we could do to add to our portfolio here. Uh, and Securely was, was absolutely wonderful in the process. And, and so I thank you for your appearance today and, and and all the things that you've done for us uh you know to date we look forward to a a, a great partnership um that being said uh, some of the questions uh, uh begged uh for more detail um and and some of it from a, a just a technical perspective i've said to many people that the last couple of years with respect to things like 
uh, security and privacy and all that. I've never been more confused in my career than I am right now relative to the uh, the overlaps in vendor landscapes and features and functions and what plays together and what doesn't play together. And you know, we have an ecosystem that has a number of products that, that have some of that overlap. You know, Umbrella uh, was mentioned earlier in the in the chat and and Brian rightly so said that, that there's nuances, there's things to understand when you're doing that kind of uh, integration or a hybrid approach. And, and, and so I encourage this, you know, our, our family membership here, you know, to get together and, and, and through our, our facilitation, maybe we could put a uh, deeper dive uh, into the architectures that can be created uh, to do the kinds of things that are, are today's problems. Um, and, uh, and again, I just want to reiterate my thanks to the security folks uh, for helping us out today. Dave, the feeling's so mutual. Um, I, we're at time here, so I won't go into it too much, but just really appreciate you guys, member districts. It's just been an incredible experience so far. Um, really appreciate it. And, and we welcome, as Craig said, communication. So questions, comments, concerns, whatever the case may be, send them our way, um, and we'll link arms and, and talk through this and work through this together. Simple as that. Yeah, I'll reiterate by Michael's statement about the ACLU. Um, we have had uh, mm -hmm. several fights, if you will, from, with the ACLU over the last couple mm -hmm. of years relative to web filtering and, uh, and you know, privacy issues and, uh, and all that. And it looks like they're uh, rearing their head again. Um, and, and the problem mm -hmm. is that they have, they have little understanding of the technology side of what it is that we're trying to do here. So, um, so you know, mm -hmm. that's a real uh, issue that uh, we could talk more about later. No doubt, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, doing my best to, to not weigh in too, too much because I know, Namoda, you said right out the gate here that, that time is of the essence and obviously I want to be respectful of everybody's time. We're a couple minutes over here. Um, so yeah, there's, there's an ender, a, a loose ender too. Let's, let's tackle them together. Let's tie them together. Let's talk through them together. Uh, but that's certainly, I understand, at the top of that list and, and, and rest assured, tackle that together. Cool. Certainly. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate you attending and Hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.